Nowadays, I am exploring uh, the PC24 in the simulator and in this regard, I am planning to make a series of videos of this plane so that I can just break down all the information related to a flight into different videos which will make it easy for you to look for a specific information on my channel. Before this, I have uploaded a video in which I have shown you how to start this plane from the cold and dark state. Uh, this video is related to takeoff and autopilot and in the last, I will upload a video in which I will show you how to perform an ILS approach and landing with this plane. Today, I am doing this short flight from uh, Heathrow to Manchester and uh, right now I am uh, on runway 27 right ready for the takeoff. First of all, let's uh, turn on the strobe. This is the control for the strobe. That's it. And uh, everything is looking good. I have the flight plan. Now, uh, there are some issues with this plane. I will explain it to you in this video. But before this, uh, let me just take you to this panel. This is actually uh, for the autopilot and uh, you can just select all the modes for the autopilot from this panel. Uh, first of all, let's make sure that uh, the flight director is on. If I press this button, you will see this magenta arrow appearing over here on the prime flight display. Now this part of the PFD is uh, the FMA or the flight mode enunciator. It will tell you uh, the mode of autopilot that the plane is in at that time when you turn on the autopilot. So right now, uh, roll and pitch is appearing. So after the takeoff, when I will activate uh, autopilot, it will actually maintain the roll of the plane, which means that the plane will not turn left or right. It will just keep on going straight. Uh, for the pitch, um, it will actually maintain the pitch. So whether you are pitching up by 10 degrees, 15 degrees, uh, it will just maintain that pitch and it will just keep on climbing. Now you have to actually change these modes. So you have to follow this uh, GPS flight plan. Uh, make sure that the nav is active. Once you activate nav, now you will see the uh, nav is armed. And uh, also make sure that over here, this part of the PFD is actually the HSI, Horizon Situation Indicator. Uh, just make sure FMS is appearing. If you press this button, nav select, you can have different types of navigation. Um, this one, LOC 1 and 2. This is uh, uh, for uh, the viewer navigation, if you're doing a viewer navigation or uh, for the ILS approach and landing, and FMS is for the GPS flight plan. So make sure that in the nav select you have this option active. Now in the HSI you are also uh, seeing this heading uh, option appearing. Uh, this is useful uh, if you have uh, this autopilot mode set to heading. So let's uh, just uh, heading bug. Right now, you can see it's uh, in this direction, 360 degrees. So if you, right now, after the takeoff, if you activate the heading mode, the plane will go to this heading. As you can see, this arrow is appearing. So the plane will turn right. I can press this button. And uh, the heading bug is now in the center. So you get this uh, heading. And this is the current heading of the plane. Wherever the plane is heading, it will show you the heading over here. And then uh, this is the uh, heading of the course. So th this is the course. This is known as the CDI or the course deflection indicator. Uh, this not only tells you the direction of the course, but also your deviation. So whether you are deviated left or right from the course. Um, I will show it to you once uh, the plane is in the air. And uh, I will just take you uh, through this uh, part of uh, the autopilot panel. That's it. So these are the few things that you have to consider. Now, before I take off, I just want to tell you uh, one thing. Is this that, you know, uh, for this plane, uh, there is this error uh, appears, uh, pitot heat. So for the pitot heat, I uh, have been looking a lot in the cockpit um, to find control for the pitot heat. It's not there. Even if you open the default checklist, you will see that uh, the speedo heat is not appearing. So uh, before we start the engines, you can see nothing is there. And starting the engines, nothing about the pitot heat. So this error appears. I was doing some practice uh, flights and uh, uh, this error keep on appearing over here. Now, um, you know, I did this flight by uh, starting this uh, plane from the cold and dark state and I found out that this error uh, comes. 
But if you start this uh, flight from the runway, when the plane is already running, then this uh, error disappears. So this is one thing uh, which I wanted to identify to you. So it's a learning platform. Um, obviously, you guys are here. You're learning from me, and I also learn from you guys. So if you know there is a solution for this uh, problem, you can let me know in the comment section. Now, um, after fixing this uh, pitot heat issue, <laughs> I started to get another issue. And this is a no, no takeoff problem. So when I'm doing flights, uh, this no takeoff error is appearing. And uh, trust me, I have uh, started this recording 20 to 25 times. And uh, I've been trying to find out a solution. But every time uh, when I give full throttle, no takeoff um, error appears. Initially, I thought maybe uh, this is uh, an issue because of the flaps. Uh, because uh, for the takeoff, I use 8 degrees of flaps. So uh, when this no takeoff error appears, uh, the flaps option also goes red. So I try to, let me just get the controller and uh, I will show it to you. I also uh, tried extending the flaps to uh, position 15 and still this issue appears. So I will just... Uh, This is, no, this is not the one. Let me just extend the flaps and set the trim to 2.5 degrees as uh, I have restarted the simulator. So that's why uh, this uh, trim was adjusted. So now it's 2.5 degrees up. So the flaps are now at 15 degrees. And you will see the color has changed. So instead of uh, cyan color, it now goes green. And if I go with full flaps, it then says no takeoff. So it makes sense that, you know, with the full flaps, you cannot take off. So adjust your flaps. And when I take the flaps to 15 degrees, this error disappears. But as soon as I will give a full throttle for the takeoff, uh, this error will appear. So if you have a solution uh, for this issue, let me know in the comment section. Uh, I really want to get rid of this issue. So let's uh, now also turn on uh, the flight level change. This is actually uh, the control from where you will be controlling the vertical speed of the plane and adjust the altitude. Uh, if you move this knob, uh, the altitude will change in thousands. And if you move the smaller one, it moves, uh, it changes the altitude in hundreds. So let's uh, set the altitude to 20,000 and that's it. And there's another thing. I have to adjust uh, the transition altitude. This is 4,000. This is the altitude at which I will be changing the barometric pressure from the given one to the standard. So everything is now good. And uh, let's uh, release uh, the parking brakes and give full throttle and take this plane up in the air. Now you can see this uh, no takeoff error is appearing. And above 100 knots, I can just take this plane up in the air. Positive rate of climb, gear is up. And now I can also start retracting the flaps. And that's it. Now I can uh, activate the autopilot and with this you can see the yaw damper will also get activated. Now the climb rate is uh, very high and aggressive. You can see the FMA, it disappears. So this is uh, what you have to adjust. So first of all, as you have crossed 1,500 feet, you can reduce the thrust. And now you can see the speed is reducing and the vertical speed is also getting adjusted. And it's going uh, at a very high climb rate because you know this 140 is a very uh, slow speed for the climb for this plane. So that's why this FMA disappears. So if it disappears, you have to adjust the vertical speed. Uh, so now what I'll do is this, that instead of uh, climbing with 140 uh, knots, I will uh, change the speed. And how do I change it? Either I can uh, go to the vertical speed mode or I can activate the auto throttle. So what I can do is this, that I will set the vertical speed and I will reduce it to Let's say 3,000. 
Now in this mode, uh, the plane is giving priority uh, to the vertical speed, so speed is no longer the priority. So if I reduce the thrust levers, so even if I just uh, set it to, let's say, 3000 feet per minute, now you can see the vertical speed is 3000 and then I can just move the thrust levers to adjust the speed. So this is one thing. If I want to go to the flight level change, as per the uh, FMS, it's 140 knots. I can uh, move this uh, FMS option, uh, as you can see it's over here, to manual and then activate auto throttle and maybe I can just take it to 200 knots. So there are multiple things that you can do during the takeoff. Now the plane is above uh, 4000 feet, I also press comma and or press this option and you know now you have the standard barometer pressure and above 10,000 I can uh, turn off the taxi lights and uh, the wing lights and plus I can also turn off the seatbelt signs. That's it. Now this is good. So um, either you can adjust the thrust by uh, adjusting the thrust levers or you can go with this auto throttle and uh, now the speed will be adjusted automatically. So for the takeoff, maybe you can increase the speed and keep it at 200. Now you can see the climb rate is a bit reasonable. <laughs> Initially, it was just like going up to 5,000 feet or 4,000 feet. But this plane has a good climbing rate. As you can see, even at 200 knots, it's uh, set, up, set to 4,500. So this is the flight level change in which priority is given uh, to, the, to the speed. And uh, the vertical speed keeps on getting adjusted. So let's say if I go back to this FMS mode, now you can see the speed is reducing and uh, in order to adjust the speed, the plane is increasing the vertical speed. It's now at 6400 because, you know, uh, the plane wants to reduce the speed. So that is uh, something really interesting about it. So maybe you can just uh, click over here and you can change it to 220. Let's uh, try it and let's see what happens. Now 220. If I now press uh, again uh, the flight level change, is it going back to the speed no it's again says 140 so it doesn't change oh maybe i can just do this option send and try so you cannot change it from here then you can manually adjust it or maybe you can just do it once you are configuring the fms for the flight so if you're coming um, uh, to this plane for after flying uh, the cessna 172 uh, then uh, obviously this uh, auto throttle thing is a bit tricky uh, but eventually uh, you will just uh, get to know these controls. So the vertical speed again I just want to go through this and then I will just move uh, to this uh, later navigation part and vertical speed the priority is given to the vertical speed and the speed uh, keeps on changing and you have to adjust it accordingly. Uh, but uh, in the flight level change, the priority is given to the speed and the vertical speed keeps on getting adjusted. So these are the two modes uh, for the climb. For the descent, uh, you can use VNAV again and plus FLC and VS as well. Now you can see the plane will level off at uh, 20,000 feet. But there's one more thing I just want to identify to you. Is this that, you know, during the climb you can see that there is a constant thrust. Now the plane will level off and uh, as you can see, uh, if I go back to the FMS speed, now I will just show you something. Now the plane is at the cruising altitude of 20,000 feet and uh, I have uh, actually set the cruising uh, speed to 230 knots again. I just went back to this uh, speed. Now the speed is also appearing in Mach, that is 0 0.470. As the plane is at 20,000 feet, the speed changes to Mach. Uh, if I'm not wrong, uh, this actually happens above 30,000 feet. But in this plane, at 20,000, uh, it's appearing. Now once the plane is at uh, the cruising altitude, if you have auto throttle active, you will see the thrust keeps on getting increase and decrease. You can climb up to 25,000 feet, you can just change the altitude, no matter what you do. You increase the speed, you decrease the speed, this thing keeps on happening. 
So if this uh, issue is happening with you, uh, you can uh, deactivate the auto throttle and then you can uh, adjust the throttle levers in such a way that the speed maintains at this level. That's it. So that's how I adjust the speed at the cruising altitude. Now you can see that uh, the thrust is stable. Now it's time to talk about uh, the lateral navigation. So right now the plane is in the nav mode and it's uh, following this uh, flight plan. What I can do is this. I can uh, adjust the heading bug because right now if I go into the heading mode, the plane will turn left. As you can see this arrow is appearing over here. And the heading is 269 degrees. So I can again uh, press this button and uh, get the heading bug in the middle. And that's it, 355 degrees. And now I can fly in the heading mode. Now you can see that the CDI uh, has changed its color. It's uh, no longer magenta, it's white. And uh, now the plane is supposed to go in this heading. You can see the plane is not going over here because right now I'm flying in the heading mode. So whatever the heading is there, it will follow. And now you can see this deflection has also started to appear over here, which means that you're on the right side of the flight plan. In order to go back to this flight plan, you have to adjust the heading and now the plane will start to follow this flight plan. Now it's going back. If you uh, are de deviated from the flight plan and you keep the heading over here uh, 342 degrees, you will fly parallel to this flight plan. You have to intercept it, so you have to adjust the heading bug in such a way that you intercept it. Now, as uh, the deflection is not uh, huge, if I activate nav, you will see that the plane will start to follow this uh, flight plan automatically. But what if you have a huge deflection? So let's go back to the heading mode and let's uh, create some huge deflection from the flight plan. So let's say I'm deviated a lot from here, from uh, this uh, flight plan. Now you can see this uh, deflection is huge. So uh, if I activate nav right now, you will see that uh, the plane will not start to follow this flight plan automatically because you know right now I am a bit far from this flight plan. And uh, now you can see this nav is armed. It's appearing in the white color, so it means it's armed. So in order to get back to this uh, flight plan, I have to uh, fly towards this line using uh, this heading. So now I have to adjust the heading bug in such a way that the plane starts to follow this uh, flight plan. Now let's uh, adjust the view. So right now the heading is active and uh, nav mode is armed so as soon as the plane is near this uh, flight plan it will again go back to the nav mode and now you can see this nav mode is now active and the plane has automatically started to follow this flight plan so that's how you uh, change uh, uh, the different modes uh, for the for the climb and uh, for the uh, lateful navigation so I hope uh, I've covered everything over here, but still, if you have any questions, you can ask me in the comment section, or if you want to add uh, anything to this video, the comment section is there for you. Thank you very much for watching and have a nice day. Hope to see you soon.